By now, chances are big that you heard us talk about Thrive Architect. And maybe you thought, well, I'm not using Thrive Content Builder, so this will not change anything for me. But the thing is that Thrive Content Builder is actually part of most of our plugins. And in this video, I'm going to show you what this changes for Thrive Leads. Hi, I'm Hanne from Thrive Teams. And in this video, I'm going to show you what it looks like to use Thrive Leads with Thrive Architect, which will automatically happen with your next update. You will immediately notice that some things have changed, and I think you will be very happy to see the new customizability options that you're getting now with Thrive Architect. So let's dive right in. Now here I loaded an opt-in form template, and as you can see at the side, we have Thrive Architect. Now, the thing is, you'll notice you can still simply click on things and start typing. So this didn't change, but there are a few things that I want to show you that look quite different. The very first thing is the lead generation element. So when you click on the lead generation element, you can see that everything you need is here in the sidebar. And that is the main difference with Thrive Architect. You will find all of the options in the sidebar. So here in the lead generation form, you can see that you have a button which is called edit components and you have a connect with service button. So the edit components button is when you want to change something on your button or on your input fields of your opt-in form. So let's click on it, edit components. And now you can click either in the text, which you can see here in the breadcrumb says lead generation input, or you can click on the button, which will then give you the lead generation submit. So this is how you will get the different options for the different elements, either click on the text or click on the button. The moment you click on the button, you will see that here you can, for example, change the colors, you can change the gradient, you can change the size of the text, you can virtually change everything. And here in the sidebar, you also have something that's called the state. And so normally, once you click on the element, it's called the default state. And when you click on this again, you can go into the hover state. And so this will allow you to change everything on hover. Now, that's completely new with uh, Thrive Architect because before you would have the templates that maybe had a hover effect, but you couldn't change it in uh, Thrive Content Builder. So now when you click on the lead generation input fields, for example, you can go to the hover effect and maybe you want this border to change color. So we could change the border here and make this um, some green color. And now when you click on the exit state, you will see that on hover, this gives you a green border around the input field. Now, that's not the only thing. When you go into your edit components, you will also be able to switch around the forms. So let's say that you want your name first and then your email, or maybe that you want your button next to the input field. So this is something that you can do very easily. Let's say we want name and email and then the button underneath it. So here I can just delete the column. So that's how you would change the look of this opt-in form. Now let's go out of this opt-in form, click on the exit components, you will have a close button here. And now let me show you something else that is completely new in Thrive Architect, and that is the mobile editing option. As you know, in Thrive Leads, you can already choose to show or hide a certain form on mobile, but you couldn't tweak a form to look differently on mobile than on desktop. And now with Thrive Architect, that is possible. So let's say that on this opt-in form, you want to know how it looks like on desktop. So you can go here, click on the responsive view and then switch to tablet. So you can see this still looks good on tablet. We don't necessarily have to change anything. But then when we go to mobile, maybe you don't want to show this image because don't need it on mobile. So we can just go into to the responsive menu and say that we want this to be hidden on mobile. And maybe this title is a bit too big, so you could just make it a little smaller so that it fits a mobile screen better. Now, this looks much better for mobile, right? So just save it. Now, the thing is, everything that you change in the sidebar in a mobile view or in tablet view will not change on desktop. As you can see, everything looks exactly the same on desktop. It didn't change. If you make inline changes, so let's say that you're in mobile view and you decide that this 
should be um, another color, so let's say red, then this will also change on your desktop view. So here, for example, this will change on desktop too. So that's important to know that everything that you do inline will change on all of the views and everything that you do in the sidebar when you're on tablet will show on tablet and on mobile and when you're in mobile will only change for mobile. Now, one other important element that changed places is the state. Of course, you still have the option to change states, but rather than having the big gray bar that covers half of the screen, you see here the little plus icon. And when you click on this, you can add a new state. And now here you can see we're in state one, it just made a copy of the default state and you can start editing or you can decide now in the default state to maybe not show the opt-in form and put a button here so you can search for elements let's say a button you can add a button here and now if you want this button to be linked to the next state before you had to use the event manager but now when you click on the button you can see here that you have something that's called animations and actions. And this is how you will switch states. So go to animations and actions. And here you can see that you can switch state and then go to state one and apply. Now, those are the biggest changes for Thrive Leads. I hope you will like this and that you can see the possibilities that Thrive Architect gives you with Thrive Leads. And please let us know in the comments if you have any questions.